joining us on the uh, program right now. Very pleased to have with us NRA ILA Oregon State Liaison, Carrie Herberts. And Carrie, good evening to you. Good evening, Cam. How are you doing? I am excellent. Thanks for coming on the show today. I'm happy to do it. It's Friday night. It's kind of our usual date on a Friday night at 840. Exactly. Eastern, Western time. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, you've had a busy week. Uh, it was really yeah. interesting in Oregon yesterday. It was, actually. The whole week has been really interesting. Um, it, it looked like, um, you know, for all intents and purposes, the gun issues were pretty much put to put to bed in the waning days of session. This is a, the end of a, what is a 30-day budget session in which policy bills were introduced, and uh, the, the session will be extended beyond into next week. But we thought everything was pretty much... Um, uh, you know, just done for, and then all of a sudden, up popped these uh, these two bills that we, um, you know, one of them certainly we were very happy to advocate for, and that was the uh, concealed handgun license holder confidentiality bill that had right. gone through a couple of recreations over the last couple of years, and so that it it just quickly uh, ginned up, and next thing you know, it was moving forward, and in, in the. Uh, put into the Senate Rules Committee where it was amended, and they, the House concurred on it today, and it's on the way to the governor's office. So that was a, a very good thing. It's not the, a perfect version of the bill, and I need to say that, but it is a, it's a good version of the bill, and it's about time something moved forward. But on the flip side of that, the, the gun ban bill um, in schools and universities came back up all of a sudden, and that, again, we thought we had that one um, – uh, dealt with a couple of weeks ago, and then uh, Senate President Peter Courtney decided to, the day after the Ohio shooting, I might add, he decided to bring it forward and threw it into Rules Committee with absolutely no public policy debate, and um, away it went. So it got out of the Senate Rules Committee and um, ended up dying on the Senate floor yesterday, which was um, really big because our understanding was that there were a couple of senators that um, were going to vote for it, and they were hoping that the House would kill it. But um, we were very, very happy to have it die just by one vote in the Senate yesterday. Absolutely. Uh, 15 to 14 was the vote. And again, uh, no chance of this coming up a third time, Carrie? Is the is the session now almost over? Well, it is. It, it's Yes, it's. It's not officially over. They haven't signed died yet. That won't happen probably until next week. But um, I think that it's it's time that they got down to business and dealt with some fiscal things. I mean, that's the whole purpose of this 30-day session is to deal with budget bills. And um, there were a number of policy bills that were thrown into the mix. And I think right now there's just a lot of um, end-of-session politicking going on. You know how that goes. And um, But as I said, for all intents and purposes, these gun bills are, are – are pretty much one of them is on its way to the governor and the other one is dead. I mean, they do not have the votes to get this bill um, off the Senate floor. And, sh- and should they decide to do that, then, you know, we'll be able to kill it in the House. But, um, you know, it's going to come back next year. There's We have no doubt about that. It's um, it's it's going to continue to be an issue. Oh, well, yeah, unfortunately, we know that uh, the bad bills sometimes uh, ha- have trouble going away permanently. Uh, you know, I mean, <laughs> Thank we saw you. this in California a few years ago with micro stamping. Heck, we're watching this in New York State right now, where they just introduced a micro stamping bill. Uh, five or six years after the first one was uh, introduced in the state, it's been defeated every year. But they do keep trying, uh, which is why yeah. we can never rest. We can never let our yeah. guard down because they're not going to go away. Uh, yeah. It doesn't matter if they're you know if ten percent of the public supports them or uh, you know eighty percent of the public supports them. Uh, these folks are not going to go away until your rights and my rights are restricted. Well, and and you're absolutely right. And in an election year, um, you know, anything could happen. Um, Certainly, it was our understanding and and just in observing the way this whole thing came about, you know, there's – it's a it's a um, very close representation here. Um, the the Democrats control a majority um, here by um, by just you know one by just one here, and so you know politically, I guess they felt that there would be some uh, there'd be something in it for them, so to speak, electorally, if they could get some targeted Republicans, vulnerable Republicans voting on this bill. And so, um, you know, they brought it up for that very reason, to throw it on the Senate floor so they could get some recorded votes. And as you know, this kind of thing always happens in election year, you know, just when just when you think you've dealt with something, 
um, it's like that game, you know, where you just whack them all. It just right. keeps coming, just keeps coming back up. So um, this really wasn't that much of a surprise. I think they really wanted to get some votes on it, and and uh, you know, we have to do our job now to work to protect those incumbents that ended up, um, you know, opposing the campus carry ban. So that's going to be our next job is to do everything we can to make sure that that they're uh, this second this pro second amendment vote is rewarded and that we do everything we can to keep them. Them, you know, certainly in office, and that's that's what happens. You know, it becomes very political at this stage in the game. Absolutely. Um, now, what about the uh, the bill that did go to the governor's desk? Any indications what the governor's going to do with it? Uh, I, I, we really haven't heard. I, I think he's going to sign it. There's, as you can, as you can see. I mean, it just received an overwhelming vote in the House, a an overwhelming vote in the Senate. Um, there's just no reason for him to veto this bill, and if he does. Um, it would have he'd have to have a pretty specific purpose, but the way that the bill was um, the way the bill was amended, it, it really makes it a lot easier for him to sign it. And the sheriffs are on board, the Republicans, the Democrats. It's just a a, a real good bipartisan effort. So um, obviously, at some point in the future, we might want to come back and strengthen it up a little bit. But for now, um, you know, those names are going to be protected. It goes into effect as soon as he signs it. So um, we're hoping that he will do that, and we'll continue to to make those requests. But um, I, we certainly don't have and haven't been given any reason as to why he wouldn't he wouldn't support it unless, you know, something again happened in these last few days. But I think he has a, a much bigger problem with the Republicans right now than on the gun issue. So. All right. Well, listen, <laughs> Carrie, I, I hope that you're right. And uh, <laughs> it, I mean, should, should gun owners be calling the, gov- the governor's office anyway? Ab- absolutely. Absolutely. And if they go to NRAILA.org, we have several, um, several alerts up there kind of chronicling um, the path of this last week. And the governor's contact information is on there as well. And yes, definitely, we would strongly encourage that our members call him and ask him to sign this bill. It is a really, really important um, privacy issue. So, um, you know, any any calls they could make would, would well be appreciated. All right, Carrie, thank you again for your time tonight. Have a, a great weekend. And, uh, you know, what? Can we, can we have another date here in a couple weeks or so? Hey, let's do that. All right. <laughs> Carrie Herbertson joining us. <laughs> Thanks, Cam. <laughs> thank you. NRA ILA's Oregon State Liaison.